I'm going to go ahead and move on to data driven. So what is a data driven schedule? Why would you use this? Um, I like to use this um, example for um, a sales report um, or bank statements or invoices. If you if you bank with Bank of America, for example, typically all of the customers at the end of the month will get their statement. We all have the same layout and format. It's just the data inside of it is going to be different for each of us. In, instead of sending out a statement to all of your customers or a sales report to all of your employees, um, your sales employees, one by one and creating 10, 15, 1,000 individual schedules and setting the parameter individually, you will want to data drive that. So one schedule can send out 1,500, 2,000 reports or statements, um, whatever it may be. So I can go in and I'm going to select data driven. In this example, let me, I'm going to parse this to see what data I have available. And I'm going to go ahead and change this here. Let's see, customers. If I parse this, all right, so I like this. I've got a lot of information available to me here. So I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to hit OK. And I need to select my key column. Now you'll notice we have group reports together by email address. This is if, for whatever reason, you have um, a contact that is responsible for multiple locations, or areas, instead of getting individual emails, it will group them together by the email address. So I've got John, who's responsible for three different store locations. He'll get one email with all three sales reports attached versus individually. Now I'm going to go through the process of selecting my report. and setting my schedule time of when I want it to run. I'm then going to go ahead and for purposes of uh, doing something a little different, I will show a Slack destination. So I have a Slack account already added, so I just select my account. I can add in a comment should I want to do that, and then I can select the channel within my Slack that I want that report to go to. Choosing a different format, you'll notice with the tab separated, you do not have options like you did with the CSV. Um, so again, depending on what you're selecting, you will have different options available to you. Um, you will definitely want to customize the output file name in this case. Because you are going to be generating multiple files, if you have leave them all the same and you're sending it to a disk or a network shared location, it may overwrite and save only the very last one. So using my insert um, from my database, my column, I want the output file to be called the company name report. OK. Now, I like to use an email destination typically because that, that may be the more common scenario. I'm going to grab it because I do have an email column, click and drag. So each of those records that populated, I can go in and it will automatically run for that record or that company and send to the associated email. Going into the subject, I can say company daily report. And again, building out an email template, high contact name, Here's your daily report. Formatting, I can specify my formatting. I'd like to show something really cool here. Um, I can enable my PDF options, and let's say you did want to password protect it, and you wanted to be able to um, have your customers um, enter in a password, but you don't want to be sending them or telling them what their password is. Maybe it would be something easily rememberable for the, the end user. 
um, CUST ID, employee ID maybe, or even um, the date. If you have a date field, um, you could use a CRD constant, and that way it is dynamic. So in order for them to open that report, they can open that up, um, and the password would be the current date in this format. So when they get the report tomorrow, the password is going to change, but it's going to be for that date. So you do have some great security options that are also easily um, manageable using this option. Under naming again, I do like to use the uh, a data-driven insert, so I can have the company name and maybe I want to have the date attached to it as well. I can have both of them listed there. So I've got the email and a Slack destination. Now, I need this to run for every single one of these um, companies, or in my case, based on my data driver, I need it to run for all 91 of my companies listed. How is it going to do that if I have to select one? Well, you don't. So under the data-driven data, you have your company name. You're just going to click and drag that over. What that is going to do is go through your data driver, each one of my 91 records, and run that report for that associated company before sending the email with that destination. You've then got your report options. So at this point, you're completing the um, report options and your exception handling, and then adding in any additional custom tasks. And because this is typically going to generate multiple reports, you do have your option, um, if you are using any custom tasks, to specify um, if that uh, custom task should be ran for each record. Go ahead and hit Finish. And this is going to save the report. And I've now got a data-driven schedule. For each of those companies, it's going to generate a sales report. And very similar to the dynamic, it will create, if it was a disk destination, using the company name or whatever insert I used. And then it will, within it, have the report in um, inside of the folder location. So I've got my data-driven package. Again, how is this a little different? This one has a little bit, um, as, as far as options, a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and move on from the scheduling. I do need to select my data driver. I'm going to select my customers um, just for purposes of relevancy of what I've previously been speaking about. I need to select my key column. So this is what I'd like to show here. You have the group reports together by email address, which we've seen in the regular data-driven schedule. But now we also have the ability to merge the group into a single PDF file. So if John is responsible for three stores, instead of getting three separate emails with the three separate reports, he will have one email with three reports with the data driven, or in this case of the package, you can merge them all into one PDF file. So John will get one email with one attachment with all three store sales details merged in together. And then I can just say all stores sales report. So all the stores that John is responsible for will be in this one PDF. If I move on from here, you will have your destination. It will be the same setup and options that you've previously seen using the insert screen. And then you are adding in your report. Now, you again have the option just for the one report, but you, if there are multiple reports, you will add them in together. It's very similar to the dynamic, and I always say with the dynamic and data-driven, they're very similar. Data-driven is typically easier nowadays for most customers to set up. It is a lot easier as far as the flow um, and would recommend using data-driven 
unless you need a static destination or maybe the destinations um, are different for the um, user. So if a user, one has email, one has I want it sent to my Dropbox, and you have that information saved, you would still want to use the dynamic schedule. Outside of that though, um, if adding in a report here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to get through the process of showing you the additional screens, seeing that the layout is different here. Um, in this case, I should still be using my data driven to grab that in. So let me click and drag it over. My naming, I do like to use the insert. And then you have your report option and your exception handling as normal. Now, be, you'll notice this option to merge all PDF outputs is grayed out. Why is that? And that is because I've already said it here that I want it to group and then merge all into a single PDF. Doing so, you can't then add in another report to have it merged because by default, it's already set to do so here. You've got your exception handling and then lastly, your custom tasks. So I've got the data-driven package created. So the last two scheduling options that we're gonna talk about is bursting and, and automation. So what is a bursting schedule? Great example would be a sales report where you've got multiple regions. Um, you want to be able to have it run based on that group header. Um, more specifically with CRD, we look at group header one. So you want to be able to burst these uh, report out by the by um, groups. I'm going to go ahead and select my report and orders by customer. I'm going to set my time, my schedule. Now here, I can select. Um, as an example, I would like to see consolidated holdings. I want to see all of the orders that have been placed by this company. So I've selected that. I need to enter in my report options, my credentials, determine if I want it to refresh or use save data. So now I need to determine what type of bursting I want to select. With the simple bursting, you can manually select and define um, specific groups that you want to burst. You'll also manually assign a static destination for each group. Um, so very useful um, if you are using um, or have a small report where each group has a single destination. But you do also have an advanced bursting option um, and in a Example of this where it would be useful is where you have um, each group may be delivered to a single or multiple destinations and in different formats. Um, so all of this information would be stored somewhere in a database um, that we would connect to or that you would connect um, CRD to uh, to have that information. So I'm going to go through and select simple bursting mode. Uh, for this example, now I do need to select the column or formula group. Um, my case, it is the company name. So now I've got to select the report group value. And again, this it does need to be in group header one of your crystal report. And you will notice down at the bottom, it does say obtaining group values. Depending on how large your report is, it may take some time. Now here's my consolidated holdings. So I can go in and drop up uh, let me hit cancel here and drop that down and now I do need to select my location again for this example I'll go ahead and use disk and I want to set my format I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna hit next now I've got my exception handling and my custom tasks You'll notice once for each re generated report or once for the entire schedule, I'm gonna hit finish. So now I've got my schedule for consolidated holdings. It's going to generate all the orders um, that company has had for the month. Now, what if I did a, an advanced option? 
So I have one that's already created. You'll notice it's the same schedule set up. I did one for Bon App for that company. You're, but here in my bursting mode, I did use advanced, but you'll notice it's the same sort of setup, but here you do have the ability to include all other group values that are present during runtime. So if another store is being added in or another employee is being added in, a sales employee, um, and they're, they need a copy, um, a new region has been added, you don't have to worry about modifying or updating the query or report itself. It will automatically group that group um, and include that information at runtime. You do have the ability to also use the record selection formula for bursting. Um, it does, as it mentions here, is a slower process as far as the execution, but you do have that ability to do so. Now, I had mentioned in the beginning, um, collect report fields data from the report. Why would you want to do that? Well, if I have a destination, and I'm going to go to email, you'll notice here I have crystal report fields, something we've not seen throughout this demo yet. But these are all of my report fields. I can use these report fields very similarly um, like I did with the data-driven or the event-based um, inserts. I can use this to build out my email template. Now here I don't have an email destination, so an email destination would not make sense. But if I go to PDF, what you'll notice here is I am bursting out and I am having a folder created based on a company name, which is down here at the bottom. So it's going to create that folder. I'm going to drop that in and format wise, I've got my format options um, A naming. Again, I want my company name to be used. And then you've got your, your zip and your PGP encryption options. So you can use these inserts just like you would with the event-based or data-driven or even the CRD constants to finish this up. So if I wanted the employee ID as part of the output of file name, I could do so. Now, it does mean that the process of execution will be a bit longer and it, it does specify that here as well for using a record selection formula. Um, but here, this is the specific option where I could use those crystal report fields. So you'll notice I've got the history here of execution. And then again, I've got some custom tasks. I'm going to hit OK. And go to the very last scheduling type, which is what we call an automation schedule. So what is an automation schedule? It is a schedule that allows you to simply run some workflows or custom tasks. Has nothing to do with reporting. As you see, there's only three options, which is your schedule name, how often, when does it need to run, and what needs to run specifically. So. A lot of IT um, team members may use this or reporting analysts, if there is a SQL script that has to run daily, um, a stored procedure, um, maybe you've got to upload every day a file that is looking at a, a folder location. You can go in and set up all of these tasks to run. Um, and again, it has nothing to do with the report side at all. It's just the automation process. Um, so additional automation that you have available to you. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.